Kevin, there's several things that we know about the sale of racehorses, and there's several things we don't know. We certainly don't know where the best horse is going to come from, from which farm or from which sale, and a racehorse doesn't know its price. But if you're going to sell horses to people, why not sell them in the most conducive and beautiful environment? You must be very, very well pleased the fact that you've managed to find a venue like Val de Vie. Yeah, we, we, we're very, very happy with the whole event. Um, we did look at it a couple of years ago before I was at the TBA and uh, this time we decided we have to have the event and Val de Vie was perfect. Everybody enjoyed it. There, there were a lot of things we have to look at and improve but you know for a first time it wasn't bad. I must admit having gone to ground zero a few months before I was thinking to myself my goodness this is really ambitious and we've got lots of photographs to prove that but I think fair to say that Jenny van der Hoff did an absolutely incredible job in organising and, and marshalling her troops. Uh, Jenny did a magnificent job, um, together with the Val de Vie staff, uh, NAS especially. And yeah, when I went there at the end of December and I looked at all the sand, I was a little bit worried. Uh, but yeah, the, to get it into that shape was absolutely unbelievable. On the ground, I had the opportunity to speak to many people, both buyers, sellers, and it was kind of a rushed sale in certain respects. And for that reason, I think a lot of people were disappointed that they couldn't get their horses onto the sale, but it really must have turned out to be a proper buyer's market in that regard. Yeah, we decided that we, well, the breeders asked us to have a sale, and we decided that was the best time. We didn't want to interfere with the CTS sales, so we decided to put it in the middle between their book one and their book two. And it was well received, but I think a lot of breeders or vendors wanted to wait and see how the sale went. And I think as it got closer to the time, yeah, I think some of them thought they, they should have actually put some of their horses on there. There's very little doubt that any sale can boast a horse like Pocket Power with three J&B Mets and four Queen's Plates to his name the darling of the South African turf and, of course, sold at that particular sale. Yeah, um, Pocket Power is the most famous graduate of the old Cape sale, which has now been replaced by Val de Vie. And for Hus to have won three Mets and four Queen's Plates uh, is unbelievably good. From a point of view of layout, easily accessible, looking after the, the patrons with good food and, and wine, that's what Val de Vie is so famous for. It's a horse estate. Everything just falls so beautifully into place. And I'm sure they were delighted to be part of us just as much as we were to be part of them. Yes, they were. Um, and they've got a very good events management team. Uh, Simone de Vitt and Elsa Human. Uh, they were excellent. And they managed the whole event from the, si from the catering side. And, you know, we just had to look and say yes or no. So it was very, very easy for us. And uh, Rake Nettling as well on the marketing side. Yeah, I think that they had as much benefit as we had. And in fact, uh, if you talk about horse sales and you just think of it, Val de Vie is now a brand. So Val de Vie yearling sale, you don't have to say oh, the national yearling sales or the two year old sales at Gosforth Park. You just say Val de Vie and everybody knows what sale you're talking about. Kevin, let's talk facts and figures. Top price, um, average, median, any relevant information? Top price 1.2 million. Um, that was for the Forsfontein dynasty. Uh, median was 115,000. And the average, I think, is about 194,000. We thought it was above 200,000, but there were quite a few uh, vendor buybacks and erroneous with our new system, erroneous inputs. So it's 194,000, which is still pretty good for a. Um, I, w I wouldn't say it's a regional sale. It's a regional sale with a select uh, band of horses, so it's a little bit more than a regional sale. From a point of view of entertainment, obviously there was this wonderful lavish banquet that was talked about and the luncheon, which must have taken a fair amount of coordination. Uh, the lunch was, was, took a lot of planning, but uh, it worked out very well. And the music was provided by a trifecta of musicians, uh, and which went down very well. So given the fact that you've had the opportunity to look at the venue, to look at the acceptance from the buyers, from the seller's perspective, chances are pretty good, I would imagine, that it's going to be a much bigger sale next year. 
Yeah, yeah. As I say, we've critically reviewed it. We know there were a lot of errors that we made. Uh, there were a lot of things that we need to change. Uh, but a lot of the time, you only see these things once it's actually happening, and then you realize, okay, this just isn't working. Uh, but you know, you live and learn. So as long as we learn from our errors and uh, we fix them next time, it'll be a bigger and better 2016 Valdivie. So if I were to go to that venue right now, would there be any semblance of uh, recognition that a sale had taken place or is it all packed away and put to bed? All packed away other than the stables which are still there. The polo guys are going to be utilising them uh, for, for the next couple of weeks and then after that um, we will keep them there until our mayor sale. So that's a real win-win situation for the existing tenants there? Yeah, uh, absolutely. They're going to have a good good use of it and uh, we don't pay rental. So at the end of the day when you put your head on the pillow on that Sunday evening after the Val de Vie sale, what was going through Kevin's mind? I was just happy that we, we managed to make a small profit uh, because I don't think many people thought we'd make any type of profit at all and we did manage Even to make a small profit. Yes, but uh, we did make a small profit and uh, if we can make a small profit in year one uh, then and that augurs well for the future. As far as the website is concerned, uh, it's many people's only manner and only means of staying in touch with the sale on a live basis. How did that work? Yeah, the streaming went very well. We used Enfarm and we've got a contract with them for this year and they were excellent. Uh, it went off without a glitch. Um, that was fine. Uh, the area we did have a few glitches was our new system with our iPads uh, and we had uh, the line go down once, but other than that it worked very well. Um, we tried it out at Val de Vie so that it would be perfect for the Nationals because there were glitches. A new IT system with a new app uh, and uh, by the time of the Nationals it will be perfect. So we, we found out all the problems that we had and we're busy sorting them out now. And also it'll help because we have had problems getting some of the data up onto the website this week and getting it up quickly. But from the nationals, it'll, be, it'll go up straight away and uh, there won't be any glitches at all.